إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Verily the praise belongs to Allah We praise him Seek his assistance and forgiveness And we seek refuge in Allah From the evil of ourselves And the evil consequences of our deeds Whoever Allah guides There is no one that can lead him astray And whoever Allah leads astray There is no one that can guide him I bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone and that he has no partners or associates and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. This evening, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, we would like to continue yani, on the theme of at-taqwa as being one of the important foundations in Islam and more particularly yani, the main objective or the purpose or the goal that for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated the fasting of Ramadan yani, to achieve a taqwa and we began uh, a couple of weeks ago dealing with the ayat of Allah, the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran where he addressed yani, to the believers Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu خطب عليكم الصيام كما قطب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون Oh you who believe fasting has been prescribed for you yani has been made obligatory has been legislated for you as it was made obligatory on the people before you that you might achieve a taqwa and in that session we talked in detail about some of the meanings of a taqwa and perhaps somebody can remind us of the definition of taqwa from Talq ibn Habib in which he explained yani, two sides of a taqwa related to the central theme of Allah's commands and Allah's prohibitions does anybody remember the definition of taqwa? No, no. taqwa is Fayyib. Anybody want to add to that anything? Fayyib. He said that a taqwa, yani this is one of the comprehensive definitions of a taqwa, which is really yani brief, but it is comprehensive, that it is acting upon obedience to Allah, based on a light from Allah. Yani acting in accordance with that which is obedience to Allah, based upon a light from Allah based upon guidance from Allah, the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Hoping for, hoping for what? The reward of Allah. And the other side of it is, avoiding disobedience to Allah. Yani, keeping oneself distance from disobedience to Allah, based upon a light from Allah. Yani, what is disobedience? That which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said is disobedience. That which came in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Hoping for, hope or fearing from, I should say, the punishment of Allah. So, in this definition of taqwa, most of the scholars' definition of taqwa centers around this kind of theme. The emphasis is on two matters, that is obedience and disobedience. Yani acting in accordance with that which is disobedience to Allah and avoiding that which is disobedience to Allah and determining what is obedience or disobedience based upon a light from Allah. Yani based upon the Quran and the Sunnah and having hope in obedience to Allah, having hope, in, hope for the reward of Allah and in avoiding disobedience to Allah and in fearing, trying to escape from the punishment of Allah. And this is a very beautiful definition and it is worthy of memorization, yani that we memorize it or at least try to hold on to the essential yani aspects of this definition which reminds us of the importance of obedience and the danger of disobedience and the reward of obedience and the punishment for disobedience. And also the importance of yani whatever we do or don't do 
Yani that it should be based upon the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That which he has revealed to us in the Quran and in the Sunnah And after that, yani Last week we also mentioned another of the very important ayat of Allah Addressed to the believers Related to At-Taqwa Ya ayu al-ladheena amanu At-Taqwa Allah Wal-Tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadin Wal-Taqwa Allah Inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon Can anybody tell us what is the meaning of this ayat? What is the meaning of this ayah? Now, Talib. Now, or oh, you know the general meaning of it. Now, all you believe, fear Allah, and look, look at, examine. Yani, look into, check out, be conscious of what you have sent ahead for tomorrow. Now. And, and finally, closing with what? Naam. Naam. And know that Allah is aware. Allah is fully aware of all that you do. And in this saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are four principles that we mentioned last week. The first of them in order. The first of them is what? That he calls the believers by their name, by their title by the description of Iman. Yani the first principle in this ayah is Al-Iman. Al-Iman. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the people of Iman. Because it is only through Iman that people are able to yani, fulfill the commands of Allah and avoid His prohibitions. Through Iman. And the second principle mentioned here. Second principle. Somebody, anybody else? Second principle. The principle of Naam. The observance of Taqwa. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah attaqullah yani the principle of taqwa which we just got finished talking about and the third principle wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadin the third principle is the principle of taking account of oneself yani al muhasaba muhasabat al nafs brothers and sisters this is very important that these principles that we know them and we understand them and that we strive and try to apply them. Al-Muhasaba. Al-Muhasaba. Take an account. Yani Muhasaba to nafs. That a person constantly, daily, day and night, ongoing, all the time. Take account of yourself. Take account of yourself. Al-Muhasaba. And the last principle that we discussed, the last principle that we discussed last week was Al-Muraqaba 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 Naam And that is That a person Be conscious of the fact That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sees them and hears them And knows what they are doing And what they are thinking Being conscious That you always pay attention That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sees you He's seeing you And he's hearing you He knows what you are doing He knows what you are saying Naam, that you be conscious of this, that Allah is watching over you. al muraqaba And this is a very, very, very critical principle in the life of a Muslim. A person wouldn't be successful without these principles, without iman, without taqwa, without taking account of oneself and being conscious all the time of the fact that Allah is watching you. Uh, and we can suffice with this. Except that there's one small hadith, one small hadith that and he should have been easy to memorize the hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu said whoever wants to know what is with Allah yani what is stored up with Allah for them yani what will be there for you that's stored up with Allah in the next life whoever wants to know that then he merely has to look at what is with him yani what he has that he has done for the sake of Allah he merely has to look at what he has done for the sake of Allah. And then you will know yani clearly what you can expect to have stored up for you with Allah. Did anybody memorize this hadith in Arabic? <laughs> Naam? Naam. Abu Bakr? And Ya'alam? ما له عند الله نعم هل ينظر ما لله عنده 
يعني من أراد أن يعلم ما له عند الله من أراد هو بوانتس يعلم نو ما له what will be for him عند الله يعني يستورب وذ الله يوم القيامة فلينظر ما لله عنده then look at what has been offered for Allah يعني from himself what he has done himself in any case uh, today inshallah our topic is continuation of the importance of at taqwa and some of the matters related to at taqwa uh, and means and ways of achieving at taqwa uh, and yani, some of the commands that follow the command with taqwa yani, today we want to talk about al iman and taqwa and more importantly observing taqwa of Allah in the way that he deserves in the way that Allah deserves it. Not just any taqwa. But that which Allah has, the taqwa that Allah has a right to. In the way that Allah has a right to it. In the way that is due to Allah. That Allah is worthy of. And that, yani this is the first command in this ayah. To observe taqwa of Allah. In the way that Allah is deserving of it. And not, and to not die except in a state of Islam. And to not die except in a state of Islam. Yani a command to observe taqwa of Allah. And a prohibition. From dying in a state other than Islam. And after this follows another command and another prohibition and another command. Yani according to how much time we have, inshallah, we'll try to cover as much of it as possible. We begin with the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ali Imran, the 102nd ayat and also 103rd ayat. The saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, ittaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O you who believe, again, yani we said the saying of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed the people, calling them out with this title of iman, then we should give ear to this, we should pay attention, we should give ourselves over to it, looking, because there is either a command, yani a khair that Allah has commanded us with, or shar, evil that Allah has prohibited us from. So in this ayat, yani we have a khair that Allah has commanded us with, ittaqullah haqqa tuqatihi, and also a shar that Allah has prohibited us from. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ O you who believe, observe taqwa of Allah, haqqa tuqatihi, in the way that it is due to Him, that He has a right to. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except Wa antum muslimun Yani here wow The wow here is wow al-hal Means that Except that your condition Is such that you are Muslims Yani in a state of submission Upon a tawheed Do not die except In a state of submission Upon a tawheed Wa'tasimu bihabli Allahi jami'an Wa la tafarraku And here's the second command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to hold fast, to adhere to, strictly adhere to the rope of Allah, hablillah, jami'an, all together, yani in a state of unity. Yani this adhering to the rope of Allah as a jama'ah, in, in, as a group, as a jama'ah, in unity. And a command, wala tafarraku, the prohibition of being divided, of separating into sects and parties and different groups. And the second ayat yani, ends with another command, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ And remember the favor of Allah, the bounty of Allah upon you, إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءَ When you are enemies, فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ So Allah joined your hearts together, فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانَ And then you became, by the ni'mah, by the favor of Allah, you became brothers. And after you were enemies to one another, Allah t- tied your hearts together. And by the ni'mah of Allah, by the favor of Allah, it is Allah's favor and His bounty upon us that we became brothers in Islam. And Allah ends this ayah by saying, وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَاءَ حُفْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ And indeed, you were upon the edge of a ditch of the hellfire. فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا And then Allah rescued you. He saved you. From the hellfire, yani by guiding you to Islam through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, kadalika yubain Allahu lakum ayatihi laalakum tahtadun. And in this way, 
Allah makes clear to you, makes crystal clear to you his ayat that you may be guided upon hidayah. Yani these two ayats, the 102nd, 103rd ayah of, the, of Surah Ali Imran contain a number of commands and prohibitions and all of this is yani, in light of the fact that the people of Iman are able to comply with Allah's commands and they are ready to avoid his prohibitions when he makes them known to them. In this ayat, Allah repeats the call to the people by their title of Iman. Ya yuhalladheena amanu. As he has called the people in the previous ayats before this. And this is reaffirmation of the importance of this description of Iman. And it is also a reminder to the believers that if indeed you are the people from the people of Iman, then it is expected of you to act in a certain way when you hear the command of Allah to comply with it, when you hear His prohibition to avoid it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to exert ourselves in every effort to observe taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is by absolute, complete obedience to Him, by complying with His commands and avoiding His prohibitions. And in this way He has encouraged us to remain firm, to be steadfast, yani by observing taqwa, to remain firm and steadfast upon the deen of Allah all the time, every day, morning, noon and night, in order what? That we may die upon Islam. In order that we may die upon Islam. And in this ayah that Hafiz ibn Kathir mentions a statement that is very, very yani, beautiful in his explanation of the meaning of observing taqwa of Allah in the way that Allah is do it. In the way that Allah has a right to it. Perhaps it is very different than from what we understand as observing taqwa of Allah. Perhaps we understand that observing taqwa of Allah means that we say that we are Muslims and we try to perform our prayers every day and we try to do some good deeds and any avoiding things like um, lying and stealing and killing and uh, illegal sexual relations and filthy things like this and maybe we think that that is sufficient. That, I mean, we don't really do a lot of bad things and we do most of the things that we are commanded with we might think that this is taqwa of Allah al Hafiz ibn Kathir Rahimahullah he says, he narrates a, a report from Ibn Abi Hatim Rahimahullah, the great scholar of Hadith with its complete chain of narration going back to Abdullah and he says that this Abdullah mentioned here is Abdullah anybody know which Abdullah this is? you don't know what we can't really say yet, right? Ibn Masood Yani, if you have read the tafsir of this ayat, then you know this is the critical statement that Al Hafiz ibn Kathir mentions concerning this ayat. The statement from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu concerning the saying of Allah, Taqullah haqqa tuqati. Observe taqwa of Allah in the way that Allah is due, in the way that Allah has a right to it. Abdul ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu he said that the meaning of this is, an yuta'a fala yu'asa. An yuta'a that Allah should be obeyed فَلَا يُعْصَى and therefore he should not be disobeyed and we should be in obedience to Allah in every situation or circumstance and be not in disobedience to Allah وَأَنْ يُذْكَرْ فَلَا يُنْسَى and that Allah be remembered that Allah be remembered and therefore not forgotten and the one who remembers Allah constantly they will not forget about Allah and how will you avoid forgetting Allah? by remembering Allah all the time how will you avoid disobedience to Allah? By being, by striving to be in obedience to Allah all of the time. And he said, وَأَنْ يُشْكَرْ فَلَا يُكْفَرْ وَأَنْ يُشْكَرْ يعني that Allah be thanked. That He be thanked. That He be, يعني that we يعني observe gratitude and appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His bounties and favors. فَلَا يُكْفَرْ so that yani, we should not observe ingratitude. Yani, kufr here being the opposite of shukra. Yani, kufr here means ingratitude, the opposite of gratitude. Shukra being thankfulness, appreciation and gratitude. And kufr here means kufr and ni'ma. Yani, being ungrateful for the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, this statement has been narrated with various different wordings. Sometimes some of the three matters mentioned here are in different orders. It has also been narrated from Abdul ibn Masood as a, as a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Al-Hafid ibn Kathir and some of the scholars of hadith said that 
the, the isnad for this hadith being mawquf as a statement of Abdul ibn Mas'ud is sahih as far as it being attributed to the Prophet sallallahu then this any attribution to the Prophet is not correct yani what is more correct what is more clear and what is more well known is that this is a statement that is mawquf yani stopping at Abdullah ibn Mas'ud the meaning of fearing Allah, observing taqwa of Allah the way he deserves and yuta'a fala yu'asa that he be obeyed and not disobeyed wa yudhkar fala yunsa and that he be remembered and not forgotten wa an yushkar fala yukfar and that he be thanked and that we don't yani find ourselves in a state of ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his favors and bounties I and mean, this particular explanation of Abdul ibn Masood is a great explanation of the taqwa that is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is that he always be remembered and that we always be thankful to him when we remember him that we be thankful to him and therefore we obey him and this is similar is very similar to the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, in which he advised some of his companions yani, to remember Allah always to remember Allah and to be thankful to Allah and to worship Allah in the best manner. Naam. Yani in which he said what? <laughs> Allahumma a'inni huh? <laughs> ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. <laughs> Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika. Help me and aid me to be in remembrance of you. That I don't forget you. Wa ala shukrika that I be thankful and grateful to you and not ungrateful to you wa ala husni ibadatika and that I worship you in the best manner that I be in obedience to you always worshiping you in the best manner possible al imam al shawkani in his tafsir of the quran concerning this ayat ittaqullah haqq tuqatihi he said that it means yani the meaning of observing taqwa of allah in the way that he has a right to it it means that the abd, the worshipper, does not leave off anything from that which has been made obligatory for him to do. And that he does not do anything from that which it has been made obligatory upon him to abandon, to avoid, of sins. And that he exert himself, that the abd exerts himself in this, juhdahu, yani, yabdhulu fi dhalika juhdahu wa mustata'ahu. That he exert his every effort and his every ability in doing so and fulfilling the commands of Allah and avoiding his prohibitions. Al Imam al Qurtubi said, Yani, that when this ayah was revealed, they said, Ya Rasulullah, man yaqwa ala dhalik, who is able to do this? Yani, who is able to observe this kind of taqwa? This kind of taqwa, that they remember Allah always and never forget him. And that they are grateful to Allah always and never be ungrateful to Him. And that they are obedient to Allah always and never be disobedient to Him. They said, who is able to do this? Man yaqwa ala dhalik. Who is strong enough to do this? Wa shakka alayhim dhalik. And this was difficult for them. Yani, why was it difficult for them? Because they believed that if Allah commanded them with something, they must do it. But they said, how can we do it? Who can do this? Yani, who is able to do this? These are the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, the best of humanity after the Prophets and messengers of Allah the best generation and the best followers of any prophet that came to humanity in, from the beginning of time and they said yani, man ala that? who's able to do this? فَشَقَّ عَلَيْهِمْ so it was sa'ab, it was difficult upon them شَقَّ عَلَيْهِمْ yani, they were concerned, worried how will we do this? not like us if somebody told us you're not supposed to do something and we do it, we just say ah, you know, it's difficult and we just go on doing it somebody tells us you have to get up in the morning at fajr time and pray and go to the masjid and pray People say, that's too difficult. They're not even worried about it. But these people were different. They were concerned. When Allah revealed something to them, they were concerned about it. Their heart was touched by it. Shaqqa alayhim. It was sab. It was heavy upon them. How will we do this? This is what Al-Imam Al-Qurtubi says, Rahimahullah. That this was sab. It was difficult upon them. Then Allah revealed, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَاعَتُمْ Then Allah revealed another ayat. So observe taqwa of Allah according to your ability, to the best of your ability. And so there's a long discussion about this. We don't have the time to discuss it now. 
Al-Qurtubi, he says, Rahimahullah, فَنُسِخَتْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ So the first ayat that we mentioned, yani, اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ was abrogated and replaced by this ayat, yani, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Observe taqwa of Allah to the best of your ability. But there's difference of opinion about this ayat being abrogated and some of the scholars said, no, it's not abrogated. And some of the scholars said that the difference between them who said it's abrogated and not abrogated is according to how they understood the meaning of the ayat. Yani those who understood it in this absolute sense that it required absolute obedience to Allah, they said it was abrogated because nobody is able to do that and that this replaced it. And the others who understood it differently, they said that this ayat is not abrogation, rather it is clarification. It clarifies the meaning of this ayat. Yani the meaning of it is observe taqwa of Allah in the way that is due to Him. Hasab istata'atum. Yani in accordance with your ability, to the best of your ability. Yani but exert yourself in observing taqwa of Allah in every situation or circumstance. Al Imam Abdurrahman al Sa'adi, rahimahullah, he says concerning this ayat, this is a command from Allah to His believing worshippers that they observe taqwa of Him. Haqqa taqwahu. In the way that he is deserving, according to his right. And that they do this continuously. And that they be firm upon this. And that they remain firm upon this until they reach death. Until they reach death. And how do we, how do he understand this? Because Allah said, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ and don't die except that you're in the state of Islam, of submission, of tawheed, of obedience to Allah, in a state of taqwa. Don't die except in that condition. So how can you do that? And then we come to this point here. Yani, so how can one do that? He said, yani, here, here the shaykh is alluding to this, that you be continuous in observing taqwa, that you remain firm, firm upon it, and you be yani, upright upon a taqwa until you reach death. And he says, for whoever lives upon a thing, then they will die upon it. So whoever, when he is in the condition of good health, and active, and energetic, fadl, and he is able to do things, and he remains constant in the taqwa, in observing taqwa of Allah, and obedience to Allah, and turning to Allah constantly, and yani whenever he falls short, in repentance, then Allah will make him firm at the time of his death, and Allah will grant him this husnu al khatima that Allah will grant him a good ending that he will die in a good condition if he did what? if he's constant all the time trying to observe taqwa of Allah trying to be in obedience to Allah turning back to Allah when he falls short in repentance asking Allah's forgiveness then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him firm and put him in a position that he will die with, with a good ending the Shaykh Abdul Rahman al Saadi rahimahullah says وَهَذِهِ الْآيَةِ Bayan Lima Yastahaku Ta'ala min taqwa This ayat is a clarification of what Allah has a right to. Bima yastahakuhu. What Allah has a right to of taqwa. This is Allah's right that you observe taqwa completely for him. But as for what is obligatory and what is expected of the person, yani this is Allah's right that you observe taqwa yani completely to be complete obedience to him. But as for what is obligatory upon the worshipper, فَكَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى It is as in the second ayat is revealed, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Yani what is obligatory upon you is to observe taqwa of Allah as best as you can, as much as you can. Allah has a right to more than that. But what is obligatory upon us is according to your ability. To observe taqwa of Allah to the best of your ability. So the details, so the details of a taqwa as it relates to the heart and to the limbs of the body are many, Shaykh Abdul Rahman al Sa'adi says. Yani the details of this taqwa as it relates to the conditions of the heart and the actions of the limbs of the body are many. But they are gathered together in the saying that a person does what Allah has commanded him with and that he leaves what Allah has prohibited him from. Yani this is the summary of it. But as far as the details, there are many. There are many. Yani the, t- the tongue, the eyes, the, yani the, the feet, the hands, everything that the limbs of the body engage in, our thoughts, in our mind, in our inner self, in our soul, in our heart, all of this, yani our speech, everything that we say, 
all of it is and he comes under this ruling of observing taqwa of Allah haqqa tuqati in the way that he has a right to in the way that is justly due to him after this the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ and do not die except in a state of Islam in submission to Allah yani that you shouldn't be in any condition except the condition of Islam you should never find yourself in a position where you are out of submission to Allah yani you have gone out of the realm of obedience to Allah you should never find yourself in this position whoever finds himself in this position must repent to Allah quickly yani must feel yani the danger of our condition and must stop what we are doing and must feel remorse for what we are doing and must return to Allah in repentance quickly and this is why the Shaykh he said what? that a person should be in constant obedience to Allah and, as, and likewise must be in constant and turning constantly to Allah in repentance and Abdul ibn Umar radiallahu anhu he said that in one sitting in one majlis with the Prophet sallallahu we counted him saying astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh one hundred times in one sitting, not in one day, in one sitting. O oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness, and O oh Allah, I turn to you in repentance. As Hafiz ibn Kathir says concerning this ayah, وَلَا تُمُوتُنَّ إِلَوَا أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And this is also a very, very important saying, worthy of memorization. Now, Al Hafiz ibn Kathir, he tells us here, how is it that a person can put theirself in a position so that they will be able to observe yani, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has required of here? required of us here وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ and do not die except in a state of Islam how can anybody yani, fulfill this yani, this instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not die except in a state of Islam nobody knows when or where or how they will die so how can a person guarantee that they will only yani, die in a state of Islam Al-Hafiz ibn Kithir says A. the meaning of this Allah is telling us حَافِظُوا عَلَى Islam. حافظوا على الإسلام protect and preserve the Islam protect and guard your Islam don't take it lightly في حال صحتكم وسلامتكم يعني when you are in a condition of good health and you are in safety and security في حال صحتكم وسلامتكم يعني when you are in good health preserve your Islam don't wait until you get sick now I'm maybe at the point of death let me get it together no when you are in good health وَسَلَامَتِكُمْ Not when you're in danger. When your safety is yani, in danger. Rather, when you are safe and secure and everything is good. Preserve your Islam. Because the time may come when it may become difficult. But now you're able to do so. So Al-Hafid ibn Kathir says what? حَافِذُوا عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ Protect and preserve your Islam. فِي حَالِ صِحَّتِكُمْ وَسَلَامَتِكُمْ In your condition of good health and safety and security. لِتَمُوتُ عَلَيْهِ So that you will die upon it upon what? upon the Islam that you are guarding that you are protecting that you are preserving and if you guard and protect yourself when you are in a position to do so then in this way inshallah لِتَمُوتُ عَلَيْهِ so that you will die upon Islam فَإِنَّ الْكَرِيمِ قَدْ أَجْرَ عَادَتَهُ بِقَرَمِهِ فَإِنَّ الْكَرِيمِ for verily the one who is generous الْكَرِيمِ Allah is generous who is bountiful قَدْ أَجْرَ عَادَتَهُ He has made it that his ada, his custom, his habit, his way, he has made it to be what? أَنَّهُ مَنْ عَاشَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ مَاتَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ مَاتَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ بُعِثَ عَلَيْهِ يعني الحافظ بن كثير says what? That Allah who is generous, he has made it like this. This is his ada, this is his way, this is his habit. That مَنْ عَاشَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ Whoever lives upon something, Allah has made it out of His generosity. بِقَرَمِهِ بِقَرَمِهِ This is from His generosity. He has made it such that if you live upon something, you will die upon that. That's His generosity. You don't know what condition you're going to die in, what situation it's going to be. But Allah has made it that if you live upon something, then you will die upon that. So if you live upon Islam, then Allah said, I will give you that. You will die upon Islam. وَمَنْ مَاتَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ بُعِثَ عَلَيْهِ So whoever dies upon something, Allah has also given it to you what? That you'll be raised upon it, upon that. فَحَافِذُوا عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ فِي حَالِ سِحَتِكُمْ وَسَلَامَتِكُمْ لِتَمُوتُوا 
alayhi guard and protect and preserve your Islam when you're in a good condition of good health and safety and security so that you may die upon it because Allah in His generosity He is Al-Kareem wa bi karamihi due to His generosity He has made it His habit that whoever lives upon something He gives them that they will die upon it and whoever dies upon something they will be resurrected upon it and Al-Hafiz ibn Kithiyya says wa iyaadu midlaa min khilafi thalik and we seek refuge in Allah from other than that that we die in any other condition that we die in any other condition than upon Islam wa hakadha ibn Kathir says hakadha rawahu al-Tirmidhi wa al-Nasai wa ibn Maji wa ibn Hibban fi sahihi wa al-Hakim fi mustradraqihi yani this is how it has been narrated by al-Tirmidhi and al-Nasai and ibn Maji and ibn Hibban in his sahih and Hakim in his mustradraq rahimahumullah rahmatan wasiya may Allah have mercy upon all of them and then here al-Hafiz ibn Kathir he mentions uh and a number of narrations from the Prophet ﷺ related to death and there are a lot of narrations and there is no doubt that we can't mention them all but we'll mention some of them and what the point here is what? that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to observe taqwa of him in the way that is due to him and that we die not except in a state of Islam what about this death? Yani what about the matter of death? the Prophet ﷺ said in an authentic hadith reported by Imam Ahmed and he mentions and Ibn Kathir mentions the complete isnad of the hadith to when he said that it's from Abdullah ibn Amr yani Ibn al-As radiyallahu anhum may Allah be pleased with both of them who said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man ahabba an yuzahzaha an al-nar wa yadukhul al-jannah fal yudrikhu maniyatuhu wa huwa yu'min billahi wal yawm al-akhir that whoever would love to be distanced from the hellfire and admitted into the paradise then he should make it such that when death reaches him his condition is what? وَهُوَ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ that he is in a condition of believing in Allah in the last day and whoever wants to be distanced from the hellfire and admitted into the paradise then he should put himself in a position such that when death reaches him it will reach him while he is in a state of believing in Allah in the last day وَيَأْتِي إِلَى النَّاسِ in the second part of this hadith وَيَأْتِي إِلَى النَّاسِ مَا يُحِبُّ أَنْ يُؤْتَى إِلَيْهِ and he should come to the people with that which he loves that they come to him with meaning that he should treat people in the way that he wants to be treated yani the first part of this what is in reference to Allah believing in Allah in the last day and the second part of it is in dealing with the people it's not enough Brothers and sisters, it's not enough that we say we believe in Allah in the last day. And maybe we really do believe in Allah in the last day. But that's not sufficient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rather, al-ihsan in Islam is not just to worship Allah in the way that He deserves worship. You yani worship Allah as though you're seeing, but you, if you don't see Him, know that He sees you. It's more than that. It also means in your relations with the creatures, the servants of Allah, that you treat them well also. Al-ihsan is also treating the people well, being kind to the people being good to the people, being just, being fair yani not oppressing people, not transgressing against people not taking anything from the rights of people this is also a very very important part of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani we worship him in reference to his rights that are due to him and also in, in reference to the rights that he has given to the people over us Naam. And in a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, in reference to yani another hadith related to a taqwa, he said, وَخَالَكَ النَّاسِ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ وَخَالَكَ النَّاسِ And after he mentioned the right of Allah, observing taqwa of Allah, he said, وَخَالَكَ النَّاسِ Not just the rights of Allah that's due to him of worship, but also, خَالَكَ النَّاسِ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ And treat the people with good character, with good manners, in your dealing with the people. Allah has required this of us and it's not sufficient that you just worship Allah well and do acts of worship but in your character in your manners in your dealing with other people in your interaction with your family in your business with the people that you come in contact in the street Muslims and Kafirs the Muslim is a Muslim in every situation or circumstance and we're not just a Muslim with the Muslims we are Muslim all the time with everybody we observe the laws of Allah we're in submission to Allah totally all the time as best we can and we are turning to Allah in repentance constantly for our shortcomings 
And the second narration that he mentions from Al Imam Ahmed from his Musnad also with the chain of narration from Jabir radiallahu anhu, he said that I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa saying, three days before his death, three days before his death, Jabir said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying, لا يمتن أحدكم إلا وهو يحسن الظن بالله عز وجل. This hadith is also reported to another chain by Imam Muslim that no one of you should die except that he has husnu dhan billahi azza wa jalla no one should die except that he thinks good of Allah as in another narration he came makes clear what it means that you know that Allah is generous that Allah is kind that Allah is merciful so you expect that from him don't expect from Allah what, what people expect from you <laughs> Yeah, and if people look at you, they expect the worst from you. Don't look at Allah like that. You might expect that from the people, but not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We only expect good from Allah. Husn al-dhan. We only think good about Allah. We only expect good from Allah. And it's also reported by Imam Ahmed, al Hafiz ibn Kathir mentions with the chain of narration from Abu Huraira, from the Prophet sallallahu that he said, in Allah, in Allah ta'ala, qal, ana inda dhanni abdi bi. Yani, I will be as my servant thinks of me. However you see Allah, He's going to be like that. That's the way He's going to be for you. If He thinks good of me, then He will have that. Good. If He thinks evil, then He will have that. And al Hafiz ibn Kathir says, This hadith, yani, is reported by Imam Ahmed, but the origin, the core of it, of the hadith, is also confirmed in as sahihain in Bukhari and Muslim with a different chain of narration from Abu Huraira that the Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala Allah Azza wa Jalla said and I end the abdi bi yani that I am as my abd thinks of me in the previous narration in the Musnad says if he thinks good of me then that's what he will have and if he thinks evil of me then that's what he will have wala tamutanna وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And don't die except as Muslims, except in a state or condition of Islam, of submission, upon a tawheed. And he observe God and protect your Islam in every situation or circumstance. And only in this way can you guarantee that you will die upon Islam. And if you die upon Islam, then and if you lived upon Islam, Allah will make it so that you will die upon Islam. If you die upon Islam, Allah will raise you up upon Islam. And after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَرْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And here is the second command and the second prohibition that came after this general call to the people of Iman. يعني وَأَرْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold tight to the rope of Allah. All together, jami'an, all together. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And do not separate, do not divide yourselves up. Don't separate from one another. And there's a lot of interpretations of the meaning of حَبْلِلَّهِ uh, and, and perhaps all of them have some legitimacy. Al-Hafid ibn Kathir discusses it in great length. Um, we will suffice to say um, as uh, Al-Imam ibn Qayyim says in his tafsir of the Qur'an, that the meaning of yani, hold fast to the rope of Allah altogether it means adhere to, stick to the rope of Allah and there are six yani, Ibn Qayyim says there are six sayings related to the meaning of Hablillah the first of them is Kitabullah Al-Quran yani, hold fast to the Habl of Allah means hold fast to the book of Allah Al-Quran now keep in mind that yani, some of the scholars said yani, Shaykh Abdul Rahman Al-Sa'adi says that Yani, in this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with that which. Yani, amrahum ta'ala bima yu'inuhum ala taqwa. Yani, after he ordered us to observe taqwa of him in the way that, that is due to Allah and to not die except in a state of Islam, then here Allah follows that with another command, and this command is that which will help and assist and enable the person to observe this taqwa. Yani, so what follows here, Shaykh Abdul Rahman al Sa'di, rahimahullah, says, is that which Allah commands us with something that will help us to observe this taqwa. 
Yani Allah has commanded us that with that which will help us to observe a taqwa and that is al-ijtima' wal i'tisam bi dinillah al-ijtima' that we be united wal i'tisam bi dinillah and that we hold fast to the deen of Allah that the da'wah of the Muslims yani be a united must be a united da'wah and that the people join themselves together and not be separated for indeed in coming together, in the Muslims coming together and being united upon their deen and their hearts being tied to one another, there is a benefit for them in their deen and in their dunya. Because indeed, bil ijtima yatamakkanun min kulli amrin min al umur. By coming together, by the Muslims coming together, instead of being separate and divided and arguing, disputing everyone with the next one, by coming together, the Muslims become enabled to do every every affair they will be capable of yani achieving it and they will achieve everything that is of benefit that is dependent upon them being together and that is not possible without them coming together and cooperating with one another in bir and taqwa indeed the separation and enmity and hatred destroys the system the nizam that brings the people together and cuts the ropes, the ties that bind us together such that if we find that everyone yani when we are separated and divided we will find that everyone will be striving to achieve the desires of his own self even if it causes harm to all the rest of the people this is what we find in the society of people who are individualists Everybody just look out for yourself. The hell with the rest of the world and everybody else. Your neighbor and even your family. Just me. It's just me. Some people don't care about anybody but their self. But in Islam Allah has commanded us to join together, to unite our hearts together so that we will cooperate with one another in piety and in righteousness and this will benefit us in our deen and in our dunya. Don't just think about ourself, our individual self but think about the benefit of the whole of the whole this is what Shaykh Abdul Rahman al Saadi said going back to the, the saying of Ibn Qayyim he said that the meaning of here of yani Hablillah he said there are six meanings the first of them is Kitabullah yani hold fast to the book of Allah wa tasimu bi Hablillah jamian all together hold together united joined together all of you hold together to the book of Allah don't just say any our little sect our little jama'ah our little group our little masjid mashallah we are upon the book and the sunnah and we don't care about the rest of the people rather let's unite with the people upon the haq those people are also holding to the Quran and sunnah why are we separated from them when we have anything any program any need we want everybody to come and help us but when they call for help, we don't care about them. But rather, the people have to be able to unite upon the haq, upon the Qur'an and Sunnah. Naam. Those people upon Qur'an and Sunnah, these people upon Qur'an and Sunnah, these people upon Qur'an and Sunnah. Naam. We have some personality differences. We have some small issues that we might and have a different view of fiqh. Sometimes we have some person has more knowledge than the other one. Okay, it's alright. But these people upon Qur'an and Sunnah, these people upon Qur'an and Sunnah, why are we divided? وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ Hold fast to the book of Allah The rope of Allah Here he said the first meaning of it is Kitab Allah and Quran وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And don't divide and separate yourselves Don't be divided amongst yourselves This is not productive The Dawah Salafiyah in this country Some years ago was very strong When the people were united And then when the people became divided The Dawah became weak Allah, some of the scholars said you had, The Dawah became weak Not just in America but in the world because of the people dividing up amongst themselves. So that's the first thing. The second saying he said, and he mentions yani, the people who, which people from amongst Sahaba or Tabi'in or from, or from amongst the scholars held this opinion and the other one. But for the sake of time, the second opinion, Annahu al Jama'a. Yani Hablillah means al Jama'a. Yani the group that the people hold together upon the jama'ah stick together as a group and this is made clear by what follows you and don't be divided and the third saying 
أنه دين الله دين الله the whole of the deen of Allah the meaning of حبل الله means hold fast to the whole deen of Allah نعم and the fourth saying he said أحد الله the covenant of Allah and the greatest covenant that we have made with Allah is what? upon a tawheed that لا إله إلا الله that we don't worship anything except Allah لا إله إلا الله the أحد of Allah and the fifth saying أنه الإخلاص الإخلاص يعني sincerity for the sake of Allah that we make our deen totally for Allah alone that every act of worship every action and every speech and our thoughts and our the conditions of our heart that it be upon a tawheed yani stick to the tawheed because whoever yani separates from the tawheed falls into shirk and the sixth saying he said amrullah wa ta'atuhu yani the command of Allah and obedience to him yani hold fast wa tasimu bi hablillah yani hold fast to the book of Allah to the jama'ah to the whole of the deen of Allah to the covenant of Allah to ikhlas to the command of Allah and obedience and here Ibn, Ibn al-Qayyim says jami'an the saying اتصموا بالحبل الله jami'an jami'an he said it is mansub ala hal jami'an means that the reason why it is yani its case is mansub right is because it is hal yani it's showing the condition holding fast to the hubl of Allah in the condition of what? of being united together yani kunu mujtami'ina ala al-i'tisam bihi yani be united together upon this sticking to the hubl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now and there are some more sayings too but for the sake of time uh, after this وَاتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ عَادَاءَ فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفاء حفرة من النار فأنقذكم منها يعني and remember the favor of Allah upon you the ni'ma of Allah upon you يعني Allah is telling us here after he commanded us with what? to hold fast to the rope of Allah and be not divided he said and remember the favor of Allah which favor of Allah? there are many favors of Allah but here Allah mentions one of them and there are others that are equally important if not more important but this is in line with the siyak yani the, yani the flow of, the, of what is being discussed here yani hold fast to the habl of Allah altogether and be not divided and remember the ni'mah of Allah upon you إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءَ فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ remember when you were enemies of one another فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ then Allah Allah tied your heart together upon the brotherhood of Iman and He united us after we were divided and separated upon the brotherhood of Iman فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ He tied your heart together. فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَاتِهِ إِخْوَانًا So then you became, as a result of him tying the hearts together, you became بِنِعْمَاتِهِ By his favor and his bounty. Brothers, you became brothers. Yani, brothers and sisters in Islam. And this is important for us to keep in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he didn't say here فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ إِخْوَانًا So Allah tied between your hearts and you became brothers. But He said فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا And this word right here بِنِعْمَتِهِ is very important because Allah is telling us clearly that you being brothers is from the ni'mah of Allah. You weren't able to do this yourselves. But by Allah's ni'mah, this is a favor and a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you became brothers. 
He tied your hearts together and then by His favor and His bounty upon you, you became brothers. And this is after you were on the edge of the pit of fire and He saved you from it. Al-Hafidh ibn Kathir rahimahullah says concerning the, these words and he, he says to the end of the ayat that this line of speech is in reference to yani it was revealed the suburb and nuzul was in reference to the Aus and the Khazraj yani they were two tribes from amongst the Arabs of Medina right the Aus and Khazraj they were two tribes there was between them wars many wars in Jahiliya in fact Al-Imam al-Shawkani mentions concerning these wars that they were warring for 120 years. كانت الحرب بين الأوس والخزرج 20 سنة حتى قام الإسلام فأطفى الله بذلك ذلك وألف بينهم يعني until Islam was established and then Allah put this war He put the fire of the war out and he tied their hearts together. 120 years they were at war. And yani Hafiz ibn Kathir says that these ayats were revealed in reference to the Aus and Khazraj. They were two tribes, Arab tribes. They were both Arabs and they were living in the same place and they were at war with each other in Jahiliya. They had a tremendous enmity and hatred between them, long standing. Then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought Islam to them and they and some of them entered into it those who entered into Islam became brothers to one another they became in love with one another and they were joined to one another due to their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cooperating with one another in piety and righteousness and in another place Allah says in the Quran who will levy أَيَّدَكَ بِالنَّصْرِهِ وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ That he, Allah, is the one who has supported you, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with his support and help and through the believers. And through the believers. بِالنَّصْرِهِ وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ And Allah is the one who tied their hearts together. لَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ أَلَّفَ بَيْنَهُمْ إِنَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ that if you had spent all that is in the earth, all of it together, you would not have been able to join their hearts together. But Allah joined their hearts together. Indeed, He is mighty and wise. This is in Surah Al-Anfal, 62nd ayat. Surah Al-Anfal, 62nd ayat. Now, so here al Hafiz ibn Kathir, he is making us to understand something of the background of this ayat, what it was revealed in reference to. And we can also, yani, put it in a contemporary light. Yani it, it was revealed in reference to Aus and Khazraj, but also we can look at ourselves in whatever country that we came from, whether we're from America, from Europe, from Africa, Asia, wherever. We know that in every place there are people who are warring. Nations that are warring, tribes that are warring. Yani locally we have gangs that are warring, right? The Bloods and the Crips and the Latin Kings and I don't know who are, whatever gangs the other ones are, right? And even if it's not gangs, yeah, and it's people from a certain locality or a certain neighborhood or a certain city. And worse than that, yeah, and after we came into Islam, we still had enmity and hatred amongst ourselves. When Allah gave us Islam as a ni'mah to make us brothers and to tie our hearts together, we have allowed shaitan and the evil, corrupt criminals who came amongst us. Wolves in sheep's clothing, that's putting it mildly criminals in the clothing, in the dressing of Islam, calling themselves the people of Sunnah, maybe even saying Salafiyyah. Wallahi, these people, as Shaykh Salih Suhaimi said, they are criminals. They are not ignorant, they know what they're doing, that's their intent to destroy the Dawah Salafiyyah and to destroy the Islam. Wallahi, they have divided us amongst ourselves. When before we were united, now we are all divided. And no one can trust anyone. That is the kind of enmity and hatred and separation and division that is between us. If you go to any place and they don't know you, they ask you, who are you? Where are you from? What master do you go to? <laughs> a brother asked us the other day, he walked into us, right? We don't know him anyway, we never seen him, he never saw us. And I offered him a book and he said to us, are you familiar with Dawa Salafiyah? <laughs> Is it true? Just like that. 
we just humbly said, yeah, we're familiar with Dawah Salafi. <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay, because I don't take anything from anyone except the Dawah Salafi. I mean, subhanAllah, this is good, really, you know, that you only want the haq. But subhanAllah, akhi, some of us, we just like, this is craziness, akhi. be easy, take it easy. And other people are also Muslims, even if they have some misunderstanding, some misguidance, they, they might be off the path. But, I mean, if they're not really just mushriks, outright mushriks, talk to people with kindness, with the character of the Prophet Wasallam, and invite people to something, not run people away. Okay, the enmity and hatred, enmity and hatred has spread amongst us to the extent that we are like Aus and Khazraj, some of us, in Islam. That was in Jahiliyyah. But in Islam, some of us are like this. Ongoing wars. And even if there was a difference between us and a person made a mistake, maybe they corrected it. But it never could go to rest. Khalas, they're done. Throw them under the bus, throw them off the building, Janazah. whatever, I don't know, huh? Janazah. They don't give them Janazah. They're not going to attend the Janazah. They're not going to attend Janazah. You don't get any Janazah. Allahumma sta'an. May Allah help us. May Allah open our hearts. Yani, may Allah tie our hearts together. May, may we accept this Islam, yani, the proper understanding of Islam from the Quran and the Sunnah as it is explained by the legitimate scholars of Islam, by the scholars of Sunnah, of the past and of the present, of this era and the previous generations. And we have many great scholars today. Not the least of them is Sheikh Salih al Fawzan. Is that right? And even if he was to say this, some people they don't want to hear it. If the scholars who passed away, if Sheikh Ibn Baz said it, and he said it, they don't want to hear it. If Sheikh Al Albani, Rahimahullah, said it, they don't want to hear it. If Sheikh Al Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah, said it, they don't want to hear it. They only want to hear what is in line with their thinking. May Allah save us from this. Wallahi, brothers, this is dangerous. I'm not saying this to make mockery of anybody. I'm saying this because we fear that we could fall into this also. We are not exempt. We don't have any asma that we are protected, that we can't go astray. Because we are also yani, human beings who make errors and mistakes. But when we make mistakes, we hope that we will be humble enough to accept the correction and correct ourselves. And that we will not... And be so lost and occupied with the mistakes of our brother that we forget to look at our own selves as the Prophet ﷺ said that some of us we only we see a speck in the eye of our brother but we don't see the tree trunk in our own eye we are inspectors on the other people but we don't look at ourselves and I'm saying that sincerely really Seriously, we have to look at ourselves. Wallahi, brothers, don't be occupied with the other people. You don't have time for that. You need to look at yourself. Every one of us need to look at ourselves and correct our own selves. Don't be so worried about the mistake of the other person. Tell him, inform him, remind him. Naam. But don't get occupied with that, stuck on that. And then you forgot about your own self. You so occupied with somebody else, you forgot about yourself. Allahu Musta'an. So, yani, the Shaykh he says here, uh, Imam Ibn Kathir, Rahimahullah, he says, And remember the favors of Allah upon you when you were enemies, and Allah tied your hearts together, together so that you became by the name of Allah brothers. He said this was revealed in reference to the Aus and Khazraj who were at war. They had many wars during the time of Jahiliyyah. And then Islam came, and Allah tied their hearts together and they were on the edge of a ditch of fire bi sababi kufrihim why were they on the edge of the fire due to their disbelief fa'ba'adahum aw anqadahum then Allah distanced them from the fire or saved them from the fire in that he guided them yani hadahum lil iman and then Allah favored them through his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or, I'm sorry, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, reminded them of the favor of Allah upon them on the day of the division of the spoils in the Battle of Hunayn. And some of them, 
Yani he had something to say about the division of the spoils. They were not pleased with the way the Prophet ﷺ was dividing it, even though he was dividing it the way Allah intended it to be divided. And he said to them, Ya ma'ashar al-ansar, O assembly of ansar, did I not find you? Dullalan, astray, Allah bi, and then Allah guided you through me. Wa kuntum mutafarriqina. Allah be and you are divided up amongst yourselves then Allah brought you together through me be and you are in poverty and Allah enriched you through me and everything that the Prophet ﷺ said to them concerning these matters yani they said Ameen it is so Naam Naam and from amongst those things he said what? you were divided up and Allah brought you together through me. Allah brought you together through me. So the Prophet ﷺ reminded them of this great favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah brought them together after they were divided. And we should also be reminded that we were divided. Yani as kuffar, as mushrikeen before Islam. And then Allah brought us together and made us brothers to one another and sisters to one another. And Ibn Kathir then here mentions the long narrations concerning the wars between Aus and Khazraj. And it's lengthy. I remember Shawkan, he says, concerning this ayat, that Allah has commanded them to remember His favor upon them. And He made clear to them this ni'mah, yani, min hadhi ni'mah, ma yunasib al-maqam. And from amongst the favors of Allah, that which is in line with this, yani, discussion, yani, with what Allah is saying in these ayats, it is that they were enemies of one another and they were divided amongst themselves and some of them were killing one another and taking one another's property and then due to the ni'mah of Allah they became brothers and they were on the edge of the fire due to the kufr that they were upon and Allah saved them from this fire by Islam and Allah saved them by Islam and in the end of the ayat he says the saying of Allah, وَلَعَلَكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ yani that, So that you will be guided. Yani remember the favor of Allah to the end of the ayah so that you will be guided. He said that this is, yani it is, Allah is, is instructing us to remain firm upon this guidance and that perhaps we will also be increased in guidance. That will be increased in guidance بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى uh, and I'll close with the statement of Shaykh Abdurrahman al Saadi concerning the, this ayah or this clo- the closing, the end of this ayah. Shaykh Abdurrahman al Saadi, rahimahullah, says here, Allah reminded them of His favor, and He re- and He commanded them, the believers, to remember this favor. He reminded them of His favor and commanded us to remember it. Don't forget this favor of Allah. وَذْكُرُ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ عَدَاءِ Remember the favor of Allah when you were enemies, killing one another, taking from one another, one another's wealth. To the extent that one tribe was at enmity with another tribe, and the people of one land, and in the same place, they were also having enmity for one another, even though they were from the same city or the same yani, area, and they were fighting one another. And this was a great, terrible evil. This was the condition of the Arabs before the missioning of the Prophet ﷺ. So when Allah missioned him, and they believed in him, and they were united, they came together upon Islam, and their hearts were tied together by Iman, it was as though yani kanu kashakhs wahid they became like one person due to their hearts being tied together and the allegiance that they had one to another and for this reason Allah says fa'allafa bayna qulubikum so Allah tied your hearts together and you became by the ni'mah of Allah brothers and you were on the edge of the fire that is qad استحقتم يعني استحقيتم يعني you are يستحق you are entitled to you were do you were deserving of the hellfire and there was nothing between you 
and falling into that hellfire except that you were you needed just to die and you would have entered it yani you were in condition that you deserve to be punished in the hellfire and there was nothing left there was no distance between you and the hellfire except that if you died you would have entered the hellfire at this point allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this condition allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from this due to what the favor that he has given you of iman believing in the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so allah made clear to you through his ayat the haq and the batil the truth and falsehood and the huda and the dalal the guidance and the misguidance bayyana kadhalika yubayyinu allah lakum ayati just like this allah makes crystal clear to you his signs the signs that you wadh make clear wa yufassir and explain wa yubayyin yani elucidate the truth from falsehood and guidance from misguidance so that perhaps you will be guided bi ma'rifat al-haqq wa al-'amal bihi so that perhaps you will be guided bi ma'rifat al-haqq wa al-'amal bihi how will you be guided by knowing the truth not enough and al-amal bihi yani some of us we are content to know the truth we are upon the haq the straight path ha amu bi akun na ma akun upon it some of us are content just to know the truth it's not enough to know the truth we are acting upon it and you have to know the truth in order to <coughs> act that's correct but after you know the truth then you must also act And if people don't know the truth they can't act right that's true but simply knowing the truth is not sufficient you must then also act upon it Didn't the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say in a hadith that the son of Adam every human being would stand before Allah on yawm al-qiyamah and they would not go forward until they question about four things and in some of the narrations they said five things about their life how did they use it and their youth how did they spend it and about their wealth how did they get it and how did they spend it and finally wa madha amila bima alima what did you do with that which you knew allah is not just going to ask you how much knowledge did you have but what did you do with it yani people will be guided sheikh abdur rahman saadi says so that you be guided to the truth la'allakum tahtadun you be guided to the truth bi ma'rifat al-haqq wal amal bi these two things must go together knowing the truth and acting upon it knowledge and action knowledge and action this is critical these are from the principles of real tarbiya any real yani education and cultivation comes from the person understanding certain principles some of us we have just been content with collecting knowledge so we accumulate a lot of information but without acting upon it in accordance with the sunnah with sincerity ikhlas for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then really we are not going anywhere and the shaykh he closes by saying wa fi hadhihi al-ayat ma yadullu ala anna allah yuhibbu min ibadihi an yadhkuru ni'matahu bi qulubihim wa alsinatihim liyazdadu shukran lahu wa mahabbatan wa liyaziduhum من فضله واحسانه يعني الشيخ عبد الرحمن السعدي said in the in this ayat we find that which point to or indicate the fact that Allah loves for his ibad to mention and to remember his favor bi qulubihim wa alsinatihim in their hearts and on their tongue some of us don't remember the favor of Allah not in the heart nor in the tongue some people they say alhamdulillah 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 but it's just on the tongue and probably the munafiq also is saying alhamdulillah and amantu billah and things like this but it's just on the tongue but he said allah loves that his ibad that they remember that they mention his favor upon them not just on the tongue but on in the heart and on the tongue yani that our heart that we focus and remember in our heart not just by words that we say in front of the people 
but in our heart we remember the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever remembers the favors of Allah upon them, and there are many, whoever remembers them, in their heart, sincerely it will affect change in the human being. And this is part of what Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said in the beginning when we started, right? He said what? That you remember Allah and don't forget Him, and that you be thankful to Allah and don't be ungrateful. Don't be ungrateful. And that you'll be obedient to Allah and not disobedient to Him. But this is very important. The Prophet ﷺ said, Oh Allah, help me, help me to remember you and to be thankful to you and to worship you in the best manner. So we have to remember Allah and remember His favors. And then we have to make sure that we have gratitude in our hearts for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this gratitude is a great motivation that moves the person who has iman, if you are really grateful, to be obedient to Allah. Naam, isn't it true that you say to your children, if you have children, that all I have done for you, huh? you remind them of all the favors you gave to them. Why are you disobedient to me? The person who is really grateful, they will be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same way that your children, if they are really grateful for all you have done for them, they will be obedient to you. But if they are not obedient, they are not grateful. They don't appreciate what you have done for them. Well, lie, they don't appreciate it. That's why they are disobedient, because they are ungrateful. And this ingratitude is a form of kufr. Yani, the mind of kufr, kufr and ni'mah, but it might lead to real kufr. Some of them, due to their ingratitude, they become disobedient, which leads to them what? Abandoning Islam. Due to ingratitude. So the Shaykh, he said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayat, we find that which indicates that Allah loves His, his, wor- his worshippers, His ibad, to remember His favors in their hearts and on their tongue, so that it may, they may be increased in gratitude and in love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By remembering Allah's favors, it will increase you in gratitude and appreciation and thankfulness and in love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase the believers who remember His favors upon them, and who are grateful for his favors to them, then Allah will increase them in his fadl and his ihsan, in more bounties and favors and kindness and generosity from him to them. فَإِنَّ مِنْ عَظَمْ مَا يَذْكُرْ مِنْ نِعْمِهِ نِعْمَةَ الْهِدَايَةِ إِلَى الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْإِتِّبَاعِ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم والاجتماع كلمة المسلمين وعدم تفرقهم And I close with this statement from Al-Imam Abdurrahman Al-Sa'adi Rahimahullah Rahmatan Wasiyan that from amongst the greatest things from the favors of Allah that we should remember is the ni'mah of Al-Hidayah ila Al-Islam Naam from the greatest of favors of Allah is that He has guided us to Islam and the following of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we are upon the Sunnah and also, he said the third thing, well, ijtima, ijtima, kalimat al-Muslimin wa adam tafarruqihim, the unity of the Muslims and the absence of division and separation amongst them. From the greatest of the favors of Allah is the ni'mah of guiding us to Islam and the following of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the unity of the Muslims. Yani whatever this means to you. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ عَادَىٰ فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَاتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Yani if you can reflect on this ayat. Remember the favors of Allah upon you when you were enemies and Allah joined your hearts together. So you became by the favor of Allah brothers to one another. اَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold fast to the Habl of Allah, the deen of Allah, the Qur'an, the Sunnah, the Jama'ah. And don't be divided. From amongst the greatest favors of Allah is that we be united upon the Haqq, upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah. As it was understood by the companions of the Prophet wasallam, As it was understood by the Salaf of this Ummah. Naam. Being united upon the Haqq. We are not saying unite with everybody just for the sake of unity. Okay, we are saying unite upon the haq. 
if people are striving to establish the Quran and Sunnah in their lives and following the way of the Prophet ﷺ and following the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajmain and the way of the Salaf al salih and listening to and accepting the advice and guidance and instruction of the ulama of Ahl sunnah then these people, even if we have differences with them, even if that person, I don't really like that brother so much, maybe he said something to me one time, I didn't get over it yet. I mean, get, be above that. Grow up. Let's be adults. Let's stop being children. No, we have differences. We don't agree on every point with that brother or this brother. But if these people are really openly calling to the sunnah, and they are acknowledging the scholars, so, okay, no problem. Your sheikh is Sheikh Abdul Masin Al-Bad. Hafizullah, may Allah protect and preserve him. And your sheikh is, yani Sheikh Salih Suhaymi. And your sheikh is Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan. <laughs> Hafizullah. Yani it's okay. Yani I'm not mad with you because you don't listen to Sheikh Al-Bad. Don't get mad with me if I don't listen to Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan. It's not that I don't care about what he's saying. I'm occupied with this sheikh. And guess what? Some of our scholars have clearly stated, Shaykh Rabi al-Madkhali, Hafidhullah, he said, it is not from the Sunnah to follow one scholar alone to the exclusion of the rest of them. This is not from the way of the Salaf. This is not from the way of the Salaf. Okay? I'm saying, Naam, I love this Shaykh more than the others, but I'm not stuck on him and I'm not going to listen to nobody but him. And I'm going to limit myself to him because Naam, he's a alim, Naam, but he's a human being. And there are other scholars who have something he don't have. He has something they don't have and they have something he don't have. And he said that all together, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, together is the real benefit for the people of Sunnah. That we benefit from all of them. Because some of them, Naam, that's a fact, is little mutasahil, kind of lenient. And some of them is a little mutashaddid, a little bit severe. And some of them are mu'atadil, yani in between, balance. Right? So we take from all of them. All of them, there's benefit in them. The people of Sunnah I'm talking about. We're not talking about deviant people, of corruption and Sufi and Ikhwan and Muslim and these people, Jamaat al Tabliq. We're not talking about these people. We're not saying they're not Muslims. No, these people are astray, for sure. There's no doubt about it. It's clear. <laughs> and if somebody asked Sheikh Salih Fawzan, is it true that Sheikh bin Baz was praising the Jamaat al Tabliq and Ikhwan al Muslimin at the time of his death? He said, this is not true at all. He said, I sat with him innumerable occasions for years and years and years and I didn't hear him praising these people and if he said anything good about them it was from the kindness of his heart maybe as a means of dawah but it's clear that he knew these people were astray and they are astray Allah, they are astray they are far astray and this is not like what we want to be occupied with but we are saying that we want to call a, we want to make a call to unity with the people of sunnah and let's get over our little differences and let's get along with another brother or another sister that's upon the sunnah even if we have some little differences with them. And we are not saying unity with the people of deviation and the people of innovation and the people of corruption and the people of misguidance and the people of ignorance. But if they are Muslims, we should have some care and concern for them as the Prophet ﷺ had care and concern for the mushriks that he was concerned about bringing them to the right guidance. We also should be concerned about these people who are lost and they are straight. And hope that we can bring the right guidance. If they listen, talk to them. If they give you a chance to yani, give them a word of guidance, advise them. With gentleness and kindness. With directness. Naam. With clarity. Don't beat around the bush. Be clear what you're saying to them. Naam. You don't have to beat them down, but let them know. If they have an error or mistake, try to correct it. Tell them, look, you know, this is what Allah said in the Quran. This is how the Prophet ﷺ explained it. This is what the scholars all are agreement upon. Naam, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. Okay, the time is late. So, yani, I remind myself first and each of us yani, the importance of observing at taqwa. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in so many ayahs in the Quran, Ya ayyul ladheena amanu at taqullah. And in this ayah today he said, Haqqa tuqatihi. And in the way that is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the best of your ability, try to remember Allah and don't forget Him. Try to be thankful to Allah and not be ungrateful to Him for His favors that He has blessed us with, the greatest of them being the guidance of Islam and the Sunnah and the way of the Salaf. And from the great favors of Allah is that He has given us the ability to practice this Sunnah. Because some people know and they are not acting upon it. Well, Allah, if you are acting upon the Sunnah, this is a favor from Allah. It's not because you are better than somebody else. Don't imagine you are better than someone. This is Allah's favor upon you. 
Because the tawfiq to do good when you know what's right, that's from Allah also. That's from Allah's favors. So these are from the favors of Allah. Remember Allah's favors upon you. Especially the favor upon you that when you were enemies of one another and He joined your hearts together and by His favor He made you brothers in Islam and you were on the brink of the pit of fire ready to fall into it. If you only had died at that moment you would be in the hell fire eternally and He saved you from it. And he saved you from it. This is indeed a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has saved us from it. And he has granted us this great favor of the brotherhood and sisterhood, the community of Islam, based upon Iman, upon the guidance of the Quran and the Sunnah, the authentic Sunnah, and the way of the Salaf al Sali, Naam, and guidance and instruction and advice from the scholars, the ulama. Naam. Please give attention to the scholars. Whichever of them from the people of Sunnah that you choose, no problem. But don't discard the rest of the scholars. All of them are our scholars. In our early time, we had Al Imam Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, and Imam Muhammad yani Nasruddin al Albani, and Imam Muhammad ibn Sali Uthaymeen. And we didn't, we didn't, wallahi, we didn't say, I only follow Sheikh al Albani and I don't listen to Sheikh ibn Baz. But we loved all of them. Let's love our scholars of past and present and follow their advice and accept their correction and try to better ourselves. May Allah guide us yani, to that which is right and to correct our faults and forgive us our sins and multiply our good deeds and accept from us our prayers and our fasting and our charity and our dhikr and dua and recitation of the Quran and our da'wah and our da'wah and our nasiha to one another. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadu an la ilaha illa anta. Subhanakallahumma wa atubu ilayk. Naam, you have something?